Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to be making a knicker or a spur for those of you on the other side of the pond. Let's dive in. If you want to see me building the spur, well, jump ahead to this timestamp. But a bunch of you just immediately ask, wait, what is a spur or knicker? Oh, well, it's this little thing on the side of some of these planes. With this rabbit plane, if I want to go with the grain and create a rabbit, it actually works really, really well. And I get a very pleasing, sharp corner on the rabbit. But if I ever want to take that same plane and go across the grain, you end up with a really ragged edge. I could solve that by scoring the work first and giving myself a nice clean shoulder. Then I can come through with the plane and remove material. With that shoulder already marked, now I'm getting a really nice clean shoulder there. The knicker is basically a knife that sticks down in front of the blade. It actually just sticks out a little bit and slices that knife mark before the blade goes. So it's all integrated into one. You can cut it with a knife and remove it with the iron. You'll find them on rabbit planes and combination planes, like this Stanley 45 or 55, or even this Stanley 50. Oh no, I'm missing one. Unfortunately, it was a really common problem that a lot of old planes were missing the knicker. And you know, oh well, most of the time you're not gonna be using it cross grain. I would say somewhere around 94, 95% of the time, I'm going with the grain. But for that extra 5% of the time, it would be nice to have it. You can actually go online and buy it. If you go to the parts division, it's a group on Facebook. Post up on there that you're looking for one. Someone on there will have one and be able to ship it out for you. But they are relatively easy to make, especially if you have an old worn out hacksaw blade. You don't need a high quality blade. You just need something of about that thickness. And these actually happen to be just about perfect. One thing you need to know is the tooth edge is hardened on most all of them and the back is not. So the back is actually a little bit softer. We wanna get rid of that hardened edge because we're not gonna be able to work it with a file though. You can see on this one, I've actually made several others. This used to be a lot longer, um, but over the time I've been making them out of this. Now, if you have the original hole in the end, you can work with that. But most of the time I'm gonna come in with a good pair of tin snips and I'm gonna cut this off and give myself a fresh edge to work with. This is a lot wider than it needs to be and I wanna remove the hardened material. So I'm gonna cut back about an eighth inch into the blade and just slice back along that, removing that section there. Let's start by drilling a small hole. This one is a number 20 bit. Don't worry about it at this point, just get a small hole. You could use the hole at the end of the bit, but we don't have that on this one. I want it to be relatively close to the end, but it doesn't have to be dead on. You may want to put a clamp down on this end to hold it from spinning. Um, I found that they're long enough, I can just hold them in place. But if you value your fingers, you might want to change that. And like that, we've got a hole. Next, I'm gonna jump up to a number 13 bit. This is actually the final hole that the screw fits through. And last, we need to countersink the hole so that the flathead will fit in there. And for that, I've got a number one bit. I don't wanna drill all the way through. I just want to drill until I get that countersink shape. Slow and less pressure is key. Then we can try the screw to make sure it sits flush. And make sure you're careful. These things like to run away. This one just about disappeared on me, but having a good magnet on hand makes it really nice because, uh, well, it's easy to pick them up and find them. The magnet also makes it very easy to handle so you can get the pieces together. So in this case, I wanna make sure that the screw sits flush with the surface. I need to go a little bit deeper because I can still feel it raised above the head there. And with a little bit more, now that head is flush with the surface. So now we can start the shaping to make it fit in there. You can see that this square is not gonna fit into that round hole there. We want to actually remove a lot of material around this hole. We're gonna get very, very close to that hole. We want to be able to rotate it so it can go into the closed position as well as down into the used position. A hand screw clamp in the vise actually makes it really nice because it raises it up so you can work on it as well as allowing you to work on a very small piece. To fit it in here with just that hole sticking up and now I can come at it with a relatively fine file and start taking it back. I'm going to keep rotating it and moving it making sure that I've got the right access on it to be able to round all the way around. After a minute or so of careful shaping, I now have this round space that fits that radius inside there. Now we need to create the tongue that actually does the cutting. Before we do that though, I wanna mark where the bottom of the skate is. I want the tongue to stick out a little bit into that Sharpie line. I'd rather have it too long than too short at this point. Then right at that Sharpie line, I'm gonna use the corner of the file, and I'm just gonna cut in a little notch. Do the same thing on both sides. That notch is gonna be the beginning of where I want it to round out. Then I'm gonna use the edge of the file and refine this down into a small tongue. Every now and then let's stop and check it and make sure we're getting close to what we want. 
In this case, we're getting really, really close to it. So now I want to create that rounded bit on the bottom that actually becomes a knife. And I want that bit to be sticking into that black Sharpie line. So back into the vise once more. And let's use the corner of the file to create that notch. And I can come in from the other side and kind of make that notch connect. When I get really, really, really close, like the nib on a saw, you can just break it off. And there's the rough shape. We need to do a little more work to actually sharpen it and shape it. But for that, we're going to use a pair of vice grips. I also want to remember the side that has the countersink is the side I want out. The side that doesn't have the countersink, we want to put that back. So I want the sharpening bevel on the side that does not have the countersink. Put it in the vice grip, lock it down, and I like to have the side I'm going to be putting the bevel on towards the back of the vice grip. I find that makes it just a little bit easier to hold. For most of the shaping, I'm going to use the extra coarse stone. And I'm just going to round it into a slight rounded shape. Or if I still have a decent amount to remove, I can use the file. I'm just trying to get that rounded shape on the tip right now. You can see I have a relatively nice rounded shape on there. And you can see that little bit of Sharpie still left on there. That Sharpie is what's going to be sticking down and cutting into it. So I want to make sure I keep that there. Now we can actually work on grinding the bevel and sharpening it. And if you buy an old stock replacement, this is where they come, unsharpened. I like to use the edge of the plate, let the vice grips hang over the end. It gives me a little bit more control and I can rock it back and forth. You can see on the back side, I've got a slight bevel shaped. So now we can actually sharpen it. That's the side with the screw head. And that's the side that is beveled will actually do the cutting. Then we can very, very carefully install it and take it for a test drive. Always start on the back stroke, pull it back. So you get a nice cut line there and then you can go forward. I, for one, would be happy with that. You can see the spur is a little bit dull. It's leaving a little bit in the corner, but that's not a huge problem is that will be filled. So there you go. So next time you finally find that tool you're looking for only to realize it doesn't have the knicker, uh, yeah, you know how to make one. They're relatively easy. You can make one about 15 to 20 minutes and there you go. You've got something that'll work for the rest of your life. And you didn't even have to wait for shipping on it. So I like that. If you have any questions, thoughts, or ideas, things that you have done differently, I would love to hear that. I do like reading through all the comments, and that means a lot to me, as well as it helps out the channel. Anytime you hit like, comment, share, subscribe, you know that type of thing helps out the channel. I've heard, know you've heard it before, but it does actually help out, so thank you for that. If you want to take it even farther, all of these names over here, those are all of the people on Patreon who help keep us going. Without patrons, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you. So if you would like to help out with that and become a patron, thank you. And that means more than I can say. As well as you could hit that little join button down below and you could become a member here on YouTube. And we have special perks for both of them. So I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So next time you go and get your knickers in a bundle, you can realize you're not quite the hack you think you are. I hope this spurs you on to try something new.